rather than large welcome back to Kosi's as the podcast my name is Kosi and whoosh let's talk the episode is back and we're gonna be talking Arsenal priorities we're gonna be looking at what are our priorities come this summer where exactly should our money be spent we like midfielders we like strikers but also our defensive shape looks a little bit shaky especially when we lose one or two uh, players from that structure so what do we do in the summer what exactly because what we do in the summer lads it's going to be very very important just as um as important as last summer was last summer we were building a structure or the guard the defense and then um you know part of the midfield and this summer it's going to be one you, you we are going to be filling into those gaps that, w- that that we didn't fill in last summer but also massively improving the quality of our side and i think that is where arsenal have to you know think critically you've got to fill in the gaps fill in the uh, the missing gaps players that you know you did buy in the previous summers but then you've got to think about how do you massively amplify the magnitude of the quality in this Arsenal side. So do me a favor, join me in the comment section by telling me if you are Arsenal and if you are given the responsibility to buy players for Arsenal in the summer, who would you bring in? In what positions? Because I don't want names. We, are, we will not be talking about names in this video. We are going to be talking about positions. Which positions would you go for? Which positions do you think a dire which which positions do you think um are really of much importance let's get to it now uh the the telegraph have actually published a story and that's why i've decided to go for this episode of let's talk and they've said so the episode is proudly sponsored by um the telegraph so they've said arsenal are planning to buy two strikers this summer a number 10 and strengthen the left side of the defense Arsenal will also focus on homegrown players this summer as well. Now, the, the couple of points in that article, if you've looked at it, one, Arsenal will go for two strikers. That is a that, that's a part that we'll react to it. You know, react to. Then Arsenal are looking for a number ten. I, I'm I'm gonna say I'm quite surprised, but then we will react to that as well. Arsenal are looking to strengthen the left side of the mid uh, of the defense by getting in. Probably a, uh, a left back. I think either a backup to Kieran Tierney or someone who can even start ahead of Kieran Tierney. That is what I, I, I will react to that as well. But there is that point of homegrown players. You know, because you know what that does is it just kills all our, you know, all our thoughts of the likes of uh, Victor or Simen, the likes of Alexander Isak. Like, when we talk about homegrown players, um, all those players do not come in right but we're going to be talking about that the advantages uh, of homegrown players and the disadvantages and more of that hit the like button subscribe to the channel in the comment box let me know which areas which positions are much needed to be fixed at arsenal and let's get the party started right uh let's start off with our uh, arsenal looking at two strikers in the summer i think that would be uh, that is going to be a very very good move and this is going to be one of the summers that are very very exciting i'm telling you there is no excitement that fans can have um you know in the transfer window than your club signing in a new striker i mean you know strikers have that uh, they've got that vibe they've got that um the kind of euphoria they create around the transfer market and everything look i'm not looking at that at the moment but what i want to focus on here is i i think this is bad business by arsenal the fact that we have had three strikers over a period of five years and all of them are going to leave and then we will find ourselves with no one and then we'll rush into the market and and, and try to get in uh you know new uh, you know new players i, I think that is you know kind of bad business we you don't need to let your players run into you know th- the final year the final year of their contracts these guys are going to be living on a free in the summer like as it on a free uh, abameyang on a free in Ketia on a free that is really bad business but Talking about reinforcements, I think this is where Arsenal will get it right. Over the, you know, in January, we desperately tried to look at uh, Duzan Blahovic because 
uh, in my opinion, I think Arsenal knew if you do not go for Dzan in January, then you cannot get him in the summer. Many clubs do spend in the summer and many clubs would uh, uh, would have wanted his signature. And of course, Juve, that was a very, very good move for them. They decided, look, uh, let's go for him in January and, uh, you know, just avoid all this kind of ruckus and, uh, you know, transfer distress that's, uh, that comes with the summer. So we failed to get Dzan Blahovic and then Arsenal just said, oh, okay, if we cannot get our number one target, then we will go back and reset and think, uh, you know, and, and think and rethink and see what we, uh, what we're going to do in the summer. So two strikers for us. No, I think it's enough. I don't know what you people think. I think it's enough. You just need someone. You need a marky signing. Like I don't know what a marky signing would be. Uh, in, for instance, probably Victor Osimhen. Probably uh, Dominic. I, I don't know if Dominic Cavalier would be marky signing. Like 50, 60 million. I, I think it would be a smacky signing. He's played for Everton for you know for quite some time. And to make that huge move to Arsenal, he's a huge player. You know, uh, you know, in my opinion. So if you can just make that huge move, uh, huge move to Arsenal, uh, then it would really make a lot of sense. So look, two strikers. That is a priority. I think the striking position at Arsenal is a huge huge priority don't lie to yourselves don't look the midfield is a shambles but that striking line is empty don't be deceived by Eddie Nketiah's two goals against Chelsea don't be deceived by you know Alexander Lacazette's penalties and seven assists this season that striking line is empty we do not our strikers do not start anywhere uh in the Premier League for me apart from Brighton maybe uh Brighton because look Timo Puki has scored more goals than Alexander Lacazette and Eddie Nketiah. Yeah, I think combined. Because Lacazette has around four and Eddie has around maybe two or three. Um, uh, actually, two in the Premier League. So that means um, Timo Puki has scored more goals than, uh, you know, th th than our strikers combined. So they don't start at Norwich. I mean, they, they don't start uh, at Norwich. So, uh, you know, my point there, lads, is the striker situation needs to be handled very very carefully yes we are going to sign in two strikers but then you also have to mind you know you have to mind the quality you have to mind the attributes these players have you don't just go in, you know out there and say i brought in ivan tony and i've also brought in timo Poki, and we have two strikers I, that will not work you have to I, I, in my opinion arsenal need to get in a striker that can represent us at you know the highest level in football that is UEFA Champions League can also take us there and can also win us games where we've not really played well but we've managed to scrap some chances into the final third none of our strikers apart from maybe Eddie uh, would do that but I don't think um, the main striker Alexander Lacazette is capable of that so that is num uh, point number one uh, with a striking position the, the, the next thing I think Arsenal need to get in a striker and this is going to be very very controversial for me I think we need to get in a striker who's proven and has got the numbers as opposed to we will wait and see and the, uh, and this is the reason look we, uh, we we brought in untested players in the you know in the in, in the you know previous two summers but look we had all the time we're playing uh we played in the Europa League and no one expected much from us um and then this season we brought in untested player untested players and we're playing nowhere um in uh in in, in the Champions League in the Europa League on Europe we're not represented anywhere and you've seen it even even when we're not represented anywhere we are not competing in Europe we've struggled because the players we brought in were untested and that is something Arsenal have to think about that is uh, something Arsenal have to you know reflect on you don't just go out there and you know sign the same you know level of players we signed last summer this have you know, th 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 these players have to be on a high high level so for me we need to go for someone who is more tested we need to go for someone who is very 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 good tested you must be backed by your numbers so alexander is in this case i'm trying to write him off i, I would um I, I would take him away patrick schick is a champions league level i would write him off definitely i think Osman is champions league level i think um I think a couple of them are uh, Champions level, uh, level. Uh, you know, th the strikers that we're linked with. I think Darwin Nunez is Champions level, he, Champions League level. We've seen him, uh, you know, 
for, for, for a Benfica side that don't even deserve to reach the quarterfinals. He's taking them there um, against Ajax and then against Liverpool. He almost, uh, you know, gave us you know something to to to, to celebrate um, as uh, as people who never wanted you know. I mean, we always want the small team to go through. That that's the nature of football. But so for for the two strikers, lads, I think Arsenal are spot on. But then you need to focus on the quality. Now the other thing is the number ten. Arsenal will also go for a number ten in the summer. This is uh, this is perplexing. This is really perplexing. Do Arsenal need a number ten? I, I don't know. I definitely don't understand, and I don't know. Because look, listen. In my opinion, I I, I said uh, this on the on, on the recent podcast. I think Martin Odegaard needs some help. You need to find uh, a player who can give you the same uh, level of creativity as Martin Odegaard, especially when Martin Odegaard rests or Martin Odegaard uh, gets injured. You know, you need to prepare for these circumstances. We've seen it this season already. But when you look at this article, it shows that Arsenal will go for a number 10, two strikers, and also strength, look to strengthen the left side of the defense. Come on, Arsenal. If this is true, that is not a priority area, honestly. We need numbers, but I have Emu Smith brought there. He can't. I, I can play him as a number ten. He might not do as well uh, as uh, as Martin Odegaard because we know, uh, you know, Smith will loves playing off the flanks. He wants to play uh, on the left, on the right, just coming, you know, and just you know, just coming to those central areas just to you know get the rebounds. But his he, the better part of his game is stretching play in in, in the wider areas. Look, talk for another day, but. I don't think a number 10 should be and is Arsenal's priority. I would love to see James Madison. I would like to see uh, Joaquin Correa. I would love to see anyone come in uh, you know, as a number 10 at Arsenal. But it's not a priority. I don't think Arsenal desperately need to bring in a number 10. Odegaard, this season, according to what we've seen, the more you play him high up the pitch, the better. And in all games that I've seen Odegaard, uh, Odegaard as a shit player, he's playing deep that is when party is having a stinker that is when party is not on the pitch and odegaard has the responsibility to pick up the ball from you know deep areas progress it forward and then supply it before he receives it back uh, to create something that is a lot of work for one person so and that is the point that is the point if you want to unleash martin odegaard the biggest signing you have to make for him is someone who can carry the ball and bring it to him but also just protect him because you know when, when, you're, when you're playing and possessing uh in the final third of the opponent you're not as safe as as, as a center back uh you know passing and, and receiving the ball in their own half unless you know you have Eddie Nketiah behind you and your Andreas Christensen like you're not uh, you know you're not that safe so you, you look at uh, players like Martin Odegaard and you've got to give them so much credit because their passing accuracy is in the 80s 88 89 he's playing his passing you know those balls you know, pro, you know those are progressive passes those are, those are key passes right his game his trademark moves are key passes are progressive carries are progressive passes and you can see that they are 88 percent 86 percent accurate that is really really good so Arsenal going for a number 10 good good news for me but not this summer I think we need to just you know borrow a leaf from Liverpool just look at Liverpool every summer they sign in someone who's not even a priority like Luis Diaz, like, like Luis Diaz in January that was not a priority they could live without him they could live without him the three goals he scored in the uh, in the Premier League Salah could have scored those Jota could have scored those Mane could have scored those. Roberto Firmino Barbosa could have scored those. But they just bring in someone who's not, uh, you know, uh, a priority. But the fact that they have already set um, um, the foundation and structure, it allows them to be, it allows them to be prudent. And and, and when Asta think about bringing in um, a new number ten, that's that's very prudent. That's so prudent, and I love it. It's kind of you know 
standing uh, at a far distance and then looking into the future that's a very good one but is it the priority we need to get our priorities right right we just you know, definitely need so um, for me two central midfielders two central midfielders or maybe what arsenal want, would you know would do or what we would do go out in the market and bring in someone like lucas paqueta back in my mouth i love him i definitely love him now the reason why i think i love Paqueta, you know paqueta is paqueta allows you to have a player who's multi-purpose number 10 he can work well there but then it can also be very very important as a player if you are if you are uh, if you deploy him you, you know in in, in 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 maybe in a 4 3 3 and you play him as a right midfielder it can re really work well you can also play him in a pivot alongside a player like thomas Partey. as long as there is that kind of uh there's that, there, there's that kind of you know shield protection he's gonna do well because much of his um much of his um of, of his game is ball progression and you know three quick uh, three quick, quick combinations that is what he does give me i give you and then i move the move i give you you give me then you move that is what uh you know he really loves those very very quick combinations and we're doing a scout report uh about him i'm also doing a scout report about all the strikers and all the players we're linked with so be be very very patient so look lads a number 10 is not arsenal's priority a number 10 is not arsenal's priority now the other uh, the other part of uh, the article is um the Arsenal will look to strengthen the left hand side of uh, of the defense now i'm skeptical not really skeptical but i think this has taken has had has had me divided and the reason that's why i'm divided is i'm looking at this arsenal side with kieran tierney and i'm like yep we're strong we're good enough back off but then then i remember that when kieran tierney is away it's so hard for us no it's it's absolute it's, a, it's an absolute tussle it's a struggle for us even to create to win and to believe in ourselves and it, it brings out the fact that i that that, that i've always talked about kieran tierney's character to this team he's one of those players that i don't think is massively talented but he's massively gifted with attitude character and positivity arsenal desperately need him but so we, we've got to ask ourselves if we're going to strengthen in that area do we bring in another backup left back who's better than nuno or are we bringing in someone who is definitely going to replace Kerentiani? huge question i want him to be my captain but the problem is that i cannot have a captain who barely plays 30 games in a campaign you need to be reliable you need to be durable for you to be captain at least it's one of the things look Maguire is shit Maguire has, has, has received um a bomb threat to his home uh in the UK but one thing you know about Harry Maguire he can play for you 38 games in a campaign you need that you need that so the left hand side of the of, of the defense that is right back I, I mean, that is left back and I know Arsenal are looking at it in this way uh Tierney is injury prone do we go and sign in someone to replace Karen Tierney or do we bring in a better backup than Nuno Tavares and then maybe one thing um I, I think Mikel Arteta is worried about is his uh, structure because look modern football literally makes these uh th these fullbacks wingers and a team's creativity hugely relies on them so you, you can see how much Karantian gives us when uh when he's on the pitch and you can see how much he gives us uh how much we miss when he's uh with, when he's actually not on the pitch so i might agree with arsenal there you might need to go for someone uh a little bit better than nuno so that when Karantian is away you have someone who directly competes with Karantian, right so i might have to agree and then the last point is um that arsenal will actually uh look at home grown players yeah man yeah look even last summer we did look at our homegrown players ramsdale ben white uh all coming in into the squad you have you know you have saka you know you have saka smith Paul as well uh, and I, I don't know what arsenal is looking into uh the fact that 
they, they, they love these homegrown players. That, and, 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 and personally, I feel it's, you know, it's, it's more about Dominic Cavalloin and, and players like that. You know, when you talk about homegrown players in this summer, I'm only thinking about one player. Maybe Max Aarons and uh, Dominic Cavalloin. And, and maybe Jed Spence and maybe, uh, yeah, you know. But I, I don't have a problem with homegrown players. I don't have players, uh, home, problems with players uh, that are um, considered as homegrown in the Premier League. The likes of James Madison and all those. As long as, right, as long as they fit the profile and quality that we want. Like, I don't want to see Ivan Tony at the expense of Darwin Nunes because, oh, he's homegrown. Oh, he's homegrown. I don't want that. If you're going for homegrown, then we must match the quality, right? But that, anyway, that is, um, that is it. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think Arsenal should focus on English homegrown players? Do you think a number 10 is a priority as well? And if not, what are our priorities come this summer. My name is Kossi. Speak to you very, very soon.